Are you ready for the word of God? Yes. Amen. Let's pray and allow the spirit of God to come in our midst. Father, thank you. Yes, Lord, that this is the day that you had made. Father, give us understanding of your word. Yes, Lord, this is your word. You said, Lord, that when you sent forth your word, it will never go void. Father, search our heart. Search our heart, Father. Prepare our hearts for your word today. Yes, Lord, your word is the living word in the name of Jesus. Father, we honor you. We honor you, Father God, Lord, the glory that you had given to your son when every, before everything began in the name of Jesus. Have it your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The title of our message today is Seeking God with all our heart. Amen. Seeking, by definition, is obviously finding. In the parable of Matthew 13, 45, the kingdom of heaven is like unto merchant men seeking goodly pearl, who, when he found one, one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Let me begin with a question. Are we really seeking God? Are we like this merchant man when he had found one of great pearl, of great price, sold everything he had? Amen? Are we? Amen. That's the question mark. The Bible said, seek first the kingdom of God and you shall find him. Knock and the door will be open to you. Nowadays, there's so many distractions in life. Social media is a great distraction. Nowadays, there's so many gadgets that are distraction. Modern technology are not really helping us. Amen? They're not helping believers like you and me. We promise to spend time with God. We said, Lord, in my day off, I want to spend time with you. But do we really do it? Our promise with God never really happened. First thing in the morning, in your day off, you look at your phone, you look at your message, it distracts you already. By the time you know it, for hours and hours, you're looking at your Facebook. Remember at Ecclesiastes 5 verse 4, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have owned, what you have vowed. Promises are not meant to be broken, especially when you promise that to God. When you promise to do it, he has no pleasure in fools. Amen? Hindi po ito promise that you that needs to be broken. Sabi nila, promises are meant to be broken. When you promise to spend time with God, do it because he had no pleasure in fools. Amen? So our first reading will be Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. God promises to take care of everything pertaining to life in one condition you seek him first amen? amen god promised to take everything pertaining to life in one condition you seek first the kingdom of god and everything shall be added to you when you say everything everything hindi po partial everything amen god required for us is to follow christ to love him first with all our hearts, mind, and soul. Put him first in everything we do. Know him, love him, spend time with him. You cannot fully really know someone until you spend time cultivating that relationship, isn't it? Amen. You cannot fully really know someone until you spend time cultivating that relationship. It's the same with God. Amen? God longed to spend time with his kids. God longed to spend time with you. Amen? God longed to, to offer his love with you. We said and we sing all the time, God everlasting love. God longed to offer that everlasting love to you. Amen? God love us that he offered his son. 
and the proof is Jesus Christ. Amen? That's the truth. He offered his son because he loved us. So when you make a vow to God, do it. Because he, is, he has no pleasure in fools. Amen? Because God is after our heart, our integrity. Amen? Promises are not meant to be broken, especially when you promise that to God. Amen? So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and everything will be added to you. As Brother Jeremy was saying, Brother Jeremy was saying that you put God first. You love God with all your heart and mind and soul. My first job, allow me to call myself as a pastor. Amen? As a pastor, my job is to love God first. Love God first and all those people around me because he had entrusted me with a flock. Amen? Pastor Romeo and I are called to shepherd the flock of God. Amen? But what we do, we seek first the kingdom of God. The Bible said, he ordained our step. The step of the righteous are ordained by God. Amen? So we ask God, we ask God for all the things he wants us to do in vision with his church. Amen? Luke 12, verse 4, uh, 48. To whom much is given, much will be required. May I repeat that? To whom much is given, much will be required. I never wanted to stand in the pulpit. You know why? Because everything God gave it to you, God will require something back. Amen? We are responsible of what we are teaching His people. Amen? So when we aim to be a teacher, we ask God, Lord, are we really, am I really called for this? Because much is required for us. God wants us to, be, to fully know His calling in our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen. To whom much will be to whom much is given, much will be required. If you heard this line of wisdom, we know it means we had held responsible for what we have. We have been blessed with talent, wealth, knowledge, time and like. It is expected that it will benefit others. Amen. If we, are exp if we are blessed with talent, wealth, and all that likes, we are expected to benefit others. Amen? God is expecting us to benefit others. When you're blessed, you are to bless others. Amen? Hindi po natin sasarilin, and we cannot keep it for ourselves. We need, we need others to know so that it will benefit others others. Amen? We are not alone in this calling. God call us so that it will benefit others. All our teaching will benefit others. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy 4.29 But therefore there is, but there you seek the Lord your God and you'll find him if you seek him with all your heart. Amen? But there you will find, but there you will seek the Lord your God, and you'll find Him if you seek Him with all your heart, with all your soul. Find a place where there is no noise and distraction. Silence your phone where there is only Bible, you and God. At work, I silent my phone because when it rings, I cannot help but answering it. But I'm working. But if you want to be alone with God, silence your phone, where there is only you, God, and the Bible. Amen? When you talk to God, he will talk back to you. Spend time in prayer and meditation. Recall your past victory. If, if we're not God, you were in trouble. Many times, people want me out of the business. But if we're not God, I am already out. You see? If it were not God, I'm already dead. You know why? I worked in Lebanon for seven years in civil war. If it were not God, I'm already dead. 
You see? They call your past victory where God send you, where God, uh, where God give you victory in the name of Jesus. Amen? And begin to find him back in your heart. You know, God is grieved because we're forgetting our first love. Amen? God is grieved because we are forgetting our first love. They said first love never die. Our passion for God should never die. Our fire for God should keep on burning. So our aim in spending time with God is to seek his face. Amen? To seek his face, to seek his heart and soul, making sure our salvation is still secure. The Bible said, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We had to ask ourselves, is our salvation is still secured? Is our soul still healthy? We need to have that spiritual inventory. That's the idea of spending time. That's the idea of seeking God with all our hearts, mind, and soul. Amen? It's for us. It's not for God. It's for us that we can know and we can be assured that our salvation is still secured. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spending time with God is healthy because you want to spend time with the one you love. Amen? Romans 8, verse 1. This is the reason why a lot of us, a lot of us are hesitant in coming in the throne of grace. Romans, 1, Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. There is, for the, there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen? Most Christians are still feeling condemned for their past sin and feel unworthy to come in the throne of grace. We are missing the profound truth that when God forgives us, he never remember our sin anymore. God is not a God. God is not dirt digger. God is a gold digger. Amen? God is not a dirt digger, but God is a gold digger. When I mean dirt digger, it means we feel condemned. We think that we cannot come to God because of our past sin. We keep recalling in our mind the things we've done. But God is not a dirt digger. God is a gold digger. There is gold in every child of God. Amen? There is gold in us, in every child of God. There is gold because we are the child of the Most High. King Jesus is our Father. Amen? Amen? There is something in you and me that we never noticed before. We used to be shy like Rhea, but when we come to know God, we become, we become, we become uh, more open to somebody. We become open, we become more transparent. Because there is gold inside us. We are a child of the king. Amen? We are the child of the king. Remember, God is not a, a dirt digger. He is a gold digger. He wants to, to know you. He wants to, to, to he longs to, to bless you with all good things. Amen? That's why spending time with God is a must as a Christian. It is healthy for our soul. Amen? If you are in love with somebody, you want to, you want to spend time with that someone. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hear what the proverb said. Proverbs 8, verse 17. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Amen? I love those who love me. I'm sure all of us experience love. Amen? L-O-B-E. When we are in love, we can't wait to see that person. Isn't it? We can't wait to spend time with that person. God is the same. He longed to spend time with his kids. You know, our dad had sense of humor. He even said, that laughter is the best medicine. It heals our soul. He longed to express himself to you. He longed to fill your heart with joy. 
He longed to tell you that He loves you with everlasting love. At hindi ito pambobola. Hindi po ito pambobola. When He said He loves you with everlasting love, it is true. He's not kidding. Hindi po siya nagpapa-impress sa isang dalaga, but He loves you with everlasting love. Amen? Yes, the proof is the cross. Jesus died for you and me. That's the profound truth. God give us that evidence that His everlasting love. Amen? To the point that He gave His Son. The reason why some Christians doesn't want to commit themselves in the church is they think they're taking, God is taking all their time. They're forgetting. It is His breath in our lungs that make us alive. Amen? That's the reason a lot of Christians doesn't want to commit themselves in a church, in the work of God in the church, because they think Bible study, practice are taking their time. They're taking away their jobs. But it's not true because it is His breath in our lungs that make us alive. Amen? Without it, you will have no job. Amen? It is the Lord that gives us the job. But you, you and I should acknowledge that. You and I should be grateful. I like that song. Uh, I like that song that the Nigerian is singing. What shall I render to Jehovah for everything he had done for me? What shall I render to Jehovah for everything he had done for me? Wala po tayong utang na loob if we are not serving God. Amen? Everything He had done for us is for the good of His children. All He asks is to love Him. Amen? All He asks is to love Him. Amen? Hallelujah. Yes, what shall I render to Jehovah for He, for he had done so very much for me? Amen? Low. So let, let us give God our best. Amen? Hebrew 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to bless him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Some people say faith keeps them from falling. I'm one of them. My faith keeps me from falling. Amen? In a sense, faith is in God is important. Without it, we will never please God. Amen? We should have a, a faith like a child because God said if we believe in our heart, he will do it. Amen? Hallelujah. The promises of God is yes and amen. The promises of God is yes. Not that I will think about it. Not that, oh, maybe. God never say maybe. God never say, I will think about it. The promises of God is yes and amen. For the glory of God. Amen? For the glory of God. Amen? Some of us are doubting the promises of God. Amen? If we doubt, then we will never have anything. The key, the key is seek first his face and hands, not his hands only to bless you. Amen? Because he is the rewarder of, of those who di diligently seek him. That's the key. Seek his face, not his hands only to bless you. When you seek his face, he won't forget to add everything. Everything will be a bonus. Amen? <laughs> like John was saying, he didn't look for a job. The job look for him. When you are blessed, the blessing will follow you. Amen. The blessing will follow you. You're coming and going. You're blessed. Amen? But the, the key for that is you seek God first, diligently, and he's the reward there of good things. Amen? Some of us are blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Amen? Yes. He didn't look for a job. The job follow him. It's a blessing. Amen. This family are so blessed. Three firstborn. 
in the family. At the age of 23, they can purchase a home. All the family is going to work. Amen. Aren't you blessed? So keep serving God. Keep seeking His face. The next is Rhea. Amen. Amen. You will be so blessed. Amen. Jeremiah 29 verse 12. Then you will call upon me. Go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, you will be found by you. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nation and from all the place where I have driven you, says the Lord. I will bring you to the place from which I caused you to be carried captive. What a beautiful verse. Amen. What a beautiful verse. Then you will call upon me and pray for me, and I will listen to you. Awesome, awesome God. Wow. You talk, you talk, you talk, God listen. Isn't it good that when we are talking, God is listening? There are times, there are peoples that you talk, you talk, you talk, they don't listen to you, they ignore you. Amen? But when you are talking, when you are praying, God is listening. God is taking your request known to the Father. Amen? I notice at work, I talk, I talk, Sean doesn't listen. And even said to Romy, take care with you. See? But God is different. When you talk to God, He listens. He takes your request known to the Father. Amen? What an awesome, awesome God. Why? Because you are important. You are His kids. Amen? You are the, you are the children of the Most High. Amen? Hindi lang po tayo royalty. We belong to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. He is our Father. Amen. But you need to search Him with all your heart. And God promised to give us back, bring us back from captivity. Our sin in, imprisoned us to do more for God. We come to the place where we shouldn't be. And we go to the place where we shouldn't go. Where we shouldn't go. We ignore the conviction of our heart because we want to do things our way. You know why David fall? You know why David fall? Why King David fall in the first place? He stayed at home instead of going to war. When he went to the balcony and found Bathsheba having a bath, he lasted after her. God bring back David from captivity, the famous adulterer and a murderer because he touches the heart of God. His name was, he, he was named after God's heart in spite of flaws and mistake he worshiped and adored God. Amen? Let us see David's prayer. I love this prayer. Psalm 51 verse 10 and 12. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take away, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. Amen. This is the prayer of King David. No wonder he was named after God's heart. Allow me to repeat it. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Create in me a clean heart. Wow, wow, wow. This should be our prayer and renew the steadfast spirit within me. You know, Satan will rob your joy if you have unconfessed sin. Do you know that? Satan will rob your joy if you have unconfessed sin. It took David ages until God sent Nathan. Nathan, the prophet Nathan, so that David can own up or, to God. The Bible says if we confess our sin, he is just to forgive and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. It grieved the Holy Spirit if we are living and continue sinning. Amen. Do we hear that? It grieved the Holy Spirit if we are living and continue sinning. 
We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We are washed by the blood of Jesus that restore us to experience the joy of salvation again. None of us can say we never make a mistake because that's not true. Somehow, somewhere, we make a decision that we are not proud of. Then we can cry out to God to uphold us with his generous spirit. God never break us. Amen? Amen. Allow me to say that again. God never break us. He restore us. Amen. He restore our soul. He restore our body. Amen? He heal us. Amen? It's not true that God is breaking us. God is restoring us. God is healing us. God wants us for himself that we have a healthy soul. Amen? Amen. But what's the key? Diligently seek God. Amen? Because he, he, he is the rewarder of those who seek him. Amen? Psalm 27 verse 4, I like this. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire of his temple. No wonder, in spite of his flaws and shortcomings, God named David a man after his heart. He truly desired God and seek him. It was David's earnest prayer. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after that, after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen? All the days of my life. That is the desire of David. That he will seek the Lord. Amen? That he will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. There are many that pray David's word but not David's heart. Amen? Marami pong nagpe-pray like David, but their hearts are far away from God. Amen? they just words. Words that meant nothing. But you know, God judges the heart. God judges the heart, the desire of our heart, because he knows above all else, our heart is deceitful. Amen? And only God can know the heart of men. The psalmist is a cry for ultimate declaration of the greatness of God and trust in protection he provides. Amen? David fought a fight through all his life against raging battles of sin in the world, the flesh, and the devil. And he wrote Psalms, Psalms 27, to encourage himself in the Lord in the midst of the battle. All of us, makikiba ka po tayo sa buhay. All of us will struggle in life until we reach our ultimate destination. But do we do? We trust God. The psalmist, David wrote Psalm 27 to encourage him to stay in the Lord. Amen? For protection. Amen? And for restoration. That's what we need to do to be like David, a man after his heart. Amen? Yes, many people pray that word, pray that prayer, but their heart is far from God. Amen? Their heart is far from God. Words are cheap. Cheap po ang salita natin. It meant nothing if we don't do it. Amen? Remember, God had no pleasure in fools. Amen? Amen? Psalm 105, verse 4 and 5. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous work which he had done, his wonders and the judgment of his mouth. Seeking the Lord means seeking his presence. Presence is common translation of the Hebrew word face. Literally, literally, we are to seek his face. To be before his face is to be before his presence. The Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Amen. Amen? In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Amen. But aren't his children always his presence? It is yes and no. Yes, in two senses. First, in a sense that God is omnipresent and therefore always near everything and everyone. He holds everything in his being. 
His power is ever present in sustaining and governing all things. Second, yes, he is always present with his children in a sense of his covenant committed to always stand by us at, and work for us in turn of everything and turn everything for our good. Behold, I will always be with you till the end of time. Amen. Amen. God is committed to stand with us. Amen. To stand with us because he wants us. Amen. He wants his children. And he's our guide till the end. Amen. That's why we are aim. Our aim is to seek God first with all our heart. Amen. Amen. With all our heart. John 14 verse 7. If you had known me, you have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and had seen him. All these things, although not always bad, can be used to tempt and persuade you to chase after something rather than life in Christ. Sometimes temptation is obvious and in your face, but other times it might be packaged and disguised as something that can be justified because of our emotion and feelings. Regardless of what and who is tempting you, the reality and importance of needing to guard our heart remain the same. We live in a world where Jesus will never be accepted because he was never meant to be. If you are not chasing Jesus, then you are ultimately chasing death. May I repeat that? If you are not chasing Jesus, then you are ultimately chasing death. Let us choose to pick our crosses every day, pursue after the hope of Jesus, and dedicate our lives to making much of him and nothing of ourselves. Amen? Yes, if we are not chasing Jesus, we are ultimately chasing death. Amen? Amen. Luke 9, verse 23. I will close soon. Then he said to them all, Anyone desire to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. If the opposite of good is bad, the opposite of life is death. Amen? If the opposite of bad, the, if the opposite of bad is good, the opposite of life is death. And the opposite of light is darkness. Then anything opposing the grace and truth of Jesus is not only dead and bad, but dark as well. Amen? Darkness is an enemy that although always been defeated, yearn, and them followers of Jesus each and every day. It's open and that we must be willing to fight in daily basis, choosing to pick our crosses and die to ourselves so that the impeccable, is strength and hope of Christ may rise up and dwell within us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Darkness is an opponent that we must be willing to fight in daily basis. To think, to pick up our crosses and die for ourselves so that the impeccable, impeccable is strength and hope of Christ may rise up and dwell with us. Amen? Hallelujah. My last verse. And then I conclude. Psalm 119, verse 5. Your word is the lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is the lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When we pursue after the hope of Jesus, we are pursuing light to the fullest extent. Amen? A true experience of life that, that really exists but when we pursue after anything contrary to what God's words, we set ourselves up for failure. Failure where we be ultimately pursuing death. Sometimes without knowing it, don't be tricked into thinking that many temptations of this world can offer anything remotely close to the fulfillment and peace of Jesus. Because they can't. They will never be. Amen? They will never be. Be able to live up God's standard of holiness and bewildering design for humanity. For only guide of life, for our only guide of life is His word, as lamb to our feet and a light to our path. Amen. In conclusion, 
He wants us to take from it that we should have a long range view of life. He wants us to understand and conduct our lives according to this principle. It is what happened. It is what happened at the end that counts. Amen? It is what happened at the end that counts. Present appearance can be deceiving. There are people who may look good, respectable, discreet, and civil. And there are others who do not look credible yet at the end. The one who are not currently respectable may turn out to be the one who have eternal life. Whereas the one who appear good and civil may be the one who end up falling. It is not what we have started, but what we will become our great finish. Amen? Amen? May I repeat that? It is not what we have started, but what we will become our great finish. Amen? Amen? So we seek God first. We seek God diligently that one day he will come to you good and faithful servant. You done well. Amen? Yes, I will repeat this again. It is not what we have started, but what we will be, our great finish. Amen? Let's pray.